We're moving on to chapter 10 in our textbook, and I'll talk about how to get into this later, but energy is the next topic. Um, so let's take a look at what we have here. The thing about energy is it is tricky to kind of put together, um, especially when we're relating it to something um, like work, and that's really what we're going to focus on today. But you probably remember energy from uh, biology or freshman year. And when you're talking about energy, the, the sun um, has energy to make, um, to help photosynthesis occur. And that capacity to do work is what we're going to focus on um, today, along with a few other things. So work is confusing. Uh, it says work is a force acting over a distance. So when you look at this here, energy in work, in basically, they're kind of things that go together. So energy and work are similar because energy is anything that has capacity to do work and work is a force that causes things to move, uh, objects to move. Um, so that's an important um, characteristic of work and its relationship to energy. Heat is a flow of energy and it's caused by the difference in temperature. And energy can be exchanged between objects uh, through contact. Um, for example, if I have uh, a pan on my um, my stove, the stove is warm and it exchanges um, exchanges heat or a temperature difference. So the, the pan was was cool, and then it heated up the bottom of my pan through the stove. Um, so you can think of energy as a, a quantity an object can possess because of the objects that are colliding with each other. And um, <clears throat> the object, it says a, a collection of objects in this case, for example. Um, and we'll talk about that more. Heat and work, um, it's basically, it says two different ways that an object can exchange energy with other objects. And typically, we're talking about into the system or out of the system. We'll talk about what the system is in just a second, but let's look at it in terms of this here. Now, you've probably learned many times in your life what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy is just energy in motion. Probably in elementary, you talked about a roller coaster. Um, so the kinetic energy, because of this, these billiard balls, um, th this ball right here can perform work on this one down here and that work can be done because it moves kinetic energy from the white one here so the white ball it's hard to see with my colors here to the purple ball and that's what we mean by an object and that's what we mean by in the system or out of the system thermal energy is energy associated with temperature and Thermal energy is a form of kinetic energy. And that means so many molecules are moving around that eventually the object is got a higher temperature, has a higher temperature. Um, if we look at it from the standpoint of potential energy, which again you're probably pretty um, pretty familiar with, is the energy that is stored in an object. Um, so because of its um, it says composition or position. Now you've always learned about position. So because this billiard ball has a height above, um, that's an H, above the pool table, that height is what multiplies its potential energy. Something we don't talk about a lot is the composition, the composition of these things. Um, and that is energy that's stored in the actual structure um, and that is really important. We'll talk about that a lot today. For example, when you ate breakfast, why is it? Uh, why are carbs so nutrient rich? Why are fats so nutrient rich? It has to do with its composition. So when we're focusing on chemical energy, which is the energy found in food, potential energy, um, it's a type of potential energy. So it's a very specific type of potential energy that has to do with how the atoms are arranged. So how atoms are attached to other atoms, how they're relative to the molecule, how the molecule is um, relative to a different um, 
molecule. Again, that's why when you talk about starches, when you have um, starches the night before an important um, competition, a starch is super energy rich because it has so many carbons and so many other atoms, hydrogens and oxygens, that are bonded. So the more atoms you have, the more bonds you have, the more energy rich it is. So chemical energy really is dependent on the number of bonds. And in this case, chemical energy is just lots of potential energy. The potential energy is stored in the bonds, thus the more bonds, the more energy. So let's kind of look at it this from this standpoint. Energy, again, it's the capacity to do work. Work is moving objects. Um, and moving objects has a lot to do with kinetic energy. And then if we move things enough and enough of those objects get moving, they'll, to use layman's terms, they'll heat up, which is what thermal energy is. Now, thermal energy is a little more complicated than that, but for what you're, what we're studying here in chemistry, this will work. And you'll notice energy is, uh, this is a very specific type of chemistry, and um, whether you call it um, uh, energy studies or thermochemistry or whatever you want to call it, but this is kind of moving towards the physics side of um, physical science, where we, chemistry and physics are kind of the, um, kind of make up that side of science. In addition, we have like life science, which includes biology and um, earth space science, which includes geology and astronomy. Today, we're really focusing on the physics or physical chemistry. So, uh, and then we just kind of talked about potential energy and that is based off of how those atoms are positioned, um, positioned to each other, carbons, hydrogens, oxygens. And then we get down here and it says the association of um, positions of electrons. Now that's something we're gonna look at in the future. Um, when we talk about how the electrons are arranged in the atom, and that's a whole other unit that is pretty cool. So let's talk about the nature of energy. This is pretty easy because we're looking at basically a height. So this whole thing is a height. So the higher you are, the more potential energy you have. So if this man is holding this uh, ball, <laughs> on a hill and um, at that A position, we have a lot of potential energy right here. No kinetic energy. Down here, B though has very low potential energy because of the height, like we said before. So let's say then that um, A is rolled down the hill, the potential energy is lost. So A no longer has its potential energy, it converted to kinetic energy. Um, there's a lot of things going on, the, there's rolling friction, there's all kinds of things. But the main thing we're focusing on is the fact that A knocks B out of here. Now, when it does that, just a little bit, if you look, B is now higher than it originally was. So B is now, has a greater H height, which means that it has greater potential energy. So there's been work done from A to B. Now, this is associated with the law of conservation of energy, and that's a pretty basic one. You learned in middle school something called the law of conservation of mass. We talked about that when we balanced equations in the first semester. Um, Antoine Lavoisier um, came up with the law of conservation of mass, but it applies to energy, too. When energy is transferred between objects or it's converted from one form of energy to another, <clears throat> For example, when plants turn light energy into chemical energy by making sugar, the total amount of energy is the same at the end as it is in the beginning. So if we look at this right here, you can see that if uh, um, this um, woman puts a ball on a spring, there's a whole bunch of mechanical energy. There's another one, mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy to do work, and that's... Um, that's what we focus on when we look at mechanical engineering. You'll notice this whole unit, a lot of the units we focus on before would be very, very well suited to preparing somebody um, to take um, chemistry in preparation for maybe um, 
health sciences, focusing on life sciences and supporting biology and supporting some sort of future in the medicine uh, medical field. This unit is really focused on engineering. So you'll notice there's a lot more uh, physics in this. And so that mechanical potential energy is quickly changed to kinetic energy when the ball is um, set up and uh, we'll better watch out in case it falls on our head. Units of energy, this is important um, because we have a lot of, of uh, it's hard to kind of think about what energy is, let alone put units on it. So let's kind of derive a um, equation here. And this is a very basic physics equation where kinetic energy equals one half the mass of the object multiplied by the square of the velocity. So if you knew the mass of the object and you were able to get a velocity, which is just speed in a certain direction, it's a vector, you could calculate the kinetic energy. Now it says when the mass is in kg and the velocity is in meters per second, all of these things, by the way, are SI units, and that's what we want. When we put them in those units, the unit for kinetic energy is um, kg times meters squared divided by seconds squared. That is very redundant. That is very um, tough to work with. So what we've done instead is we made something called a joule. And a joule is the amount of energy it takes um, or is needed to move one kilogram of something uh, a speed of one meter per second. So it's increased its speed from uh, zero to one. So that's what we've done with that. Um, you'll see later we talk about specific heat. It's the same thing. How much energy is put into an object to make that object raise one degree Celsius. It's hard to grab on to some sort of unit. So this is what we've done with this, a joule. And you're going to see here in a second here, um, this, is, this is nice. One joule, again, equals one kg times m squared divided by s squared. And get, when we get into another unit coming up, you'll see that this is the case. Um, you're going to see a lot of, of um, derivations of units which is a little um, strange mathematically, but then when you think about it, it makes sense. How much energy does it take to raise one kilogram of something um, so that it moves from a speed of zero to one meters per second? Um, a joule, again, we can also, the nice thing about SI units compared to the British system is that they all work together nicely. You can see here a joule is the amount of energy you need one. We said that already, but the nice thing is, um, or we said the one before, but it also works. We can take this and we can move it one meter in one second. So we use all of these and we can derive more. We can also use something called a calorie. Again, I said this before, is the amount of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. I might have said specific heat. Sorry about that. But a calorie makes sense also. So we have these two nice energy, um, these two nice energy units, and we can throw one more in there by putting a K in front of it. That just makes it a thousand. Um, FYI, food. When with when you hear calories, a lot of people think food calories. We are actually when you talk about calories, you're you're really talking about uh, kilo calories. So when you when you think about you know. Uh, I just went outside and shoveled and burnt 700 calories. That's actually 700 times a thousand. We just don't want to get in the habit. We, we're lazy. We don't want to say, you know, hey, this uh, this can of Pepsi has 250 kilocalories. We don't want to say that. So we just shorten it to calories. It's actually kilocalories, though, a thousand of those. So this is kind of what it looks like here. You got your um, some energy factors, um, again, joules, we like joules. Here's the conversion factor, which is nice. That's an important one. You want to pay attention to that. And then if we uh, use key, uh, calories as a big C, notice when we use a big C, like I said before, that actually means it's a kilocalorie. That's why it works, because we're kind of lazy. <laughs> when you use a big C, you're talking about the kilocalorie, which is the one in food. So instead of us saying kilocalorie, we just use a big C. How do we? Uh, how do you? Your parents pay for electricity. Uh, they pay by the kilowatt hour, um, and that's just another energy um, unit. We can have all kinds of energy units. 
here's some more and it shows the comparisons of all those. We added in um, 